Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Qual? That is a, that is, well, Q O L or L L? I think I just wrote just one L. And then it's at Jago and Lightfoot. I don't know. Uh -huh. I mean, a qual is, an, is a weird little uh, Australian carnivorous marsupial, kind of like oh. a Tasmanian dev devil. But... I like how many things have been put into her name. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of things. <laughs> it's a lot of things. Um, is the opening line of Prime a reference to the opening line of And She Was by the Talking Heads? More generally, are there any references in your lyrics that you want more fans to know about? <laughs> there are more references in my lyrics, but I don't necessarily want other people to know about. <laughs> I mean, you put in like little goodies for yourself sometimes yeah. because you spend so long working on a record that there's some little Easter eggs you hide. Like back in the Arkerville River Day, they had a quote from a Linda Ronstadt song in an Arkerville song. <laughs> and, um, uh, and I hit a, a quote from a Stone song somewhere else and like, but. You just sort of tuck these things away. Mm -hmm. But the beginning of Prime, no, it was, um, um, I hadn't even, I hadn't even thought about that actually, but the, the thing about counting backward from a thousand is something that a friend of mine mentioned that they used to help them go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And um, it does actually work. I can't think of, maybe except for one time, like on an international flight where I've managed to get all the way to zero oh my gosh. before falling asleep. I've tried that. I get bored, but not in a sleepy way. <laughs> well, that's another problem. But it's, it's just, just really, it's just keeping me up, and I'm just keep counting. Keep count it with your with your with your breathing, or there's there's mm. different ways you can do it. Mm. All right, um, Wolof Bomberg at Wolof Bomberg. Um, oh wait, no, I skipped one. That's okay. I'll go ahead. Uh, so when you're in two bands, how does it work when you're writing? Does some material just feel like it fits the one band more than the other? Or is it deliberate? Do you feel guilty for the band that didn't get the good stuff this time? <laughs> <laughs> what makes something right for Loma and she versus Shearwater? You know, I'm still writing Loma songs right now, uh, and it's going to be kind of weird to get back into writing Shearwater songs. I haven't done it in a while, so I've sort of sort of started to write in the in the key of like Emily's voice mm -hmm. and just imagining that she's going to sing these things real awesome, and I don't have to really think about it as much. <laughs> it's really fun. And um, so, I don't know, I guess it's, it seems like it would be a different headspace. Um, is it mainly key, or is it? Is there some other thing? There's other things though, I mean there's like a whole kind of outlook or, or personality or something, like mm. I feel like I'd write differently for, I feel like I write differently for Emily to sing than, like about different stuff. Does it, does it, it how about like musically though? Um, musically I just try to keep doing things that I didn't like, that I haven't done before in one way or another um, just because you don't want to repeat yourself too much and, and it's more fun when you don't quite know what's going on. So would you write, like right now you're writing Loma stuff, uh -huh. music stuff for Loma, mm -hmm. would any of these, these are definitely Loma songs and not Shearwater songs? I'm like pretty sure, I mean it could be, I mean there was one Loma song that didn't quite make that, that um, we were like, you know this sounds more like a Shearwater song but I'm not mm -hmm. sure what um, what happened to that one? Hmm. Um, but it was partly it was just the vocal line was wrong, and I was trying to kind of rush the lyrics on it, and I ended up with something that wasn't very good. So mm -hmm. um, put it back in the scrap heap hmm. and tried to forget the melody I'd written for it. Because once you attach a melody to something, it's really hard to get it out. Yeah, like sometimes it just dies. But um, that one was a really cool. Like the backing track is awesome for that song. I remember there was I can't remember what band it was that like would release B sides of backing tracks for songs that just didn't make. Oh, that's interesting. And, you know, so you can just kind of imagine <laughs> what that song what would have been, been. You know, sorry, we just <laughs> this one just sort of came out of volcano cake. Huh, that's interesting. All right, uh, I'll go back to that one. Oh, it's Rory again. Um, why don't we have an epic live series DVD LP set of greatest hits? Clearly, the live's catalog supports a double box set live best of situation. Oh my god. Um, well, it, it costs a lot to make that, is the problem. And uh, it's just mainly a matter of cost. It's the matter with all, it's the thing about all of these. The, the other day I was asking people online about, like, what should a new Shearwater record be like? Just because I was sort of curious about what people responded to. And the things that people liked were almost invariably stuff that was really expensive. <laughs> and the, I was like, oh, shit. 
you know. <laughs> it's <good. laughs> record budgets just, you know, they just yeah. shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. Yeah. And um, after, after, I mean, some sounds are just really expensive to make. Like if you want strings on a record or something, like yeah. you got to get good string players and a good room to put them in and good microphones to record them with. And um, that just can't, you can't do that on your laptop. Um, and in general, I'm interested mostly in doing things that you can't do on a laptop. Because... Because uh, you can do this on a laptop. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's valid. It's still totally valid, but there's something that I just don't... I like hearing people actually playing instruments, even if they're not playing them at the same time, necessarily. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, you know, sounds that actually came out of the air, came, existed in the air before they went into the microphone. And God, like, the, the drummers on GarageBand are really spooky now. Like, if I were a studio drummer, I'd be really scared by GarageBand. I know, yeah, you were saying, um, like, they have different names and... Oh, yeah, they're all dudes. Like, but they have these little profiles, like, you know, Chad or, you know, Todd, you know, Mike. A bunch of, like, they'll sound like drummer dude kind of names. And um, they play in whatever kind of style you want. You can say what beats you want to emphasize, whether you want them to be laid back or not. If, if, if I were, a, like, a studio drummer who was supposed to just be metronome solid and steady feel all day long, I'd be scared to death of those things because, like, they can do it. And it's very hard to tell the difference between that and a really good yeah. drummer recorded really well. So maybe that's cool, I'm, but I, or there's some way to mess with that. But it's not really what it's not very inspiring. Um, I have some funny recordings of, of that we did, like a, like, like record on my phone with a sound check of Dan playing drums on yeah. the Loma tour, and they're just little things that I'm thinking about making into some loops and like trying to make some sounds based off of those, at least in, initially. And then maybe remove them later or replace them with something else or maybe they're they sound perfect there's one that we were messing with that just it's really wrong sounding like it's <laughs> the timing's all crazy and it's it's i mean it's just uh you know it's not just like steady but it's but it's so uh, there's there's something i really like about it something really musical about it 